Welcome to Words to Grow Right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks Jr. To continue to have a passion for God and a compassion for his people. As I continue, as, as I continue, but go where the Lord has taken me, not where I wanted to go. Amen. And, you know, in case you have forgotten those definitions, that passion and intense and overpowering emotion, such as love, but not excluded to love, and passion for us is emotional. Compassion is sympathy for the suffering of others, often including a desire to help. So passion and compassion uh, uh, it, it's part of who we are. It's part of uh, um, how we are to be. Uh, compassion is spiritual. Passion is emotional. But it's a part of who we are. And as we begin to look at the passionate and compassionate characters uh, uh, in that word of God, we begin to see how... Uh, they are needed in our lives, you know, and how we approach this relationship with God. I, I saw a scripture, interesting scripture in James 4 and 5. It says, do you think the scriptures have no meaning? Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. I said, wow. God is passionate. Well, God is passionate that the spirit he's placed within us should be faithful to him. And so we should be passionate about making sure that the spirit that he's placed within us is faithful to him. It's used for him, for his glory. Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good, those who love God and are called according to his purpose. God calls all things to work together for two reasons, those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. Love God, loving God requires purpose, requires passion. Loving God requires passion. And being called according to his purpose requires compassion. Passion and compassion are intertwined with everything that we have to do because there's no need to do there's no reason to serve God if you can't serve God with passion. If you can't, if you can't serve him, we talked about that a little bit on Bible study. If you can't give God all that you have. So Teresa talked about her being in the band when she was young. Hallelujah. And, and, and wouldn't do it today. Why? Because it required a certain amount of passion then that you don't have now. To get up early in the morning before classes and, and, and go to classes as well to learn the steps, to learn how the music, to learn to play the music without the, uh, uh, by sound and without reading the paper, to, to march while you're playing. I mean, all of those things, I mean, and everyone who, 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 who has done things, uh, 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 Brother Hill played basketball to learn, hallelujah, uh, uh, you know, you know the, the mind of, of, of basketball people to learn the stance, to learn the looks, to learn how to not give somebody uh, uh, your tendency to, to learn how to shoot. I mean, all of those things don't just happen. They require passion. They require passion. And so, uh, um, when, when we look, when Jesus says in Mark, 8, 34 to 35, it says, then calling to the crowd uh, to join his disciples, he said, if any of you wants to be my followers, you must have passion. And he didn't say you must have passion, but he said something that was going to require you to have passion. 
He said, you're going to have to, you, 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 you're going to have to give up your own way and, and, and take up your cross and follow me. It's just like when somebody wants to join a, 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 a football team or a basketball team and they have a certain way that they're shooting and it doesn't work and the coach comes and they, they coach you on how to shoot, right, Brother Hill? And, and they say, well, you got to do it this way to be on this team. You got to give up what you want to do. You want to be a ball hole, a, a, a ball hole, then you got to get off the team. Because you got to do it this way. And so he said, you got to, you, you know, you have to give up your own way and take up, uh, uh, take up your cross and follow me. That cross is, 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 is the, you're going to have to develop a passion for what I want you to do. Not for what you want to do. Because if you try to hang on to your life, you're going to lose it. You try to hang on, look, you, you, you want to be a good player, you want to you hang on to your way, you're going to sit the bench. You want to do it your way, you're going to sit the bench. Try to hang on to your life, you, go, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and the sake of the good news, you will save it. So many times we have to understand that passion is not simply enough. I have to have passion, uh, uh, but it has to be directed the right way and for the right things. And for us, it's, the, it, it's, it's to be directed God's way and to, to, to accomplish the things of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And so following Jesus means that you switch your passion from what you want to what he requires. You switch your passion from what you want to what he requires. You can still be passionate, but you're going to have to make some alterations. It's from what you want to what Jesus requires. And that's in the word of God. You can be so passionate. Oh, I'm so I'm passionate about playing, in, in, you know, playing in, in, uh, on, in the in the. Um, Music ministry or singing in the choir. You got a lot of people passionate about that. But that's not why you're here. It's not why you're here. You're not here to simply play. You're, you're, you're here to, 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 to learn and, and, and increase your relationship with, with God. I'll never forget at my old church that, that the musician would, would play for the choir, right? And then... Uh, when the pastor got up, he took his time to go get him something to eat. Until the, until the, the, the people, you know, because they had a speaker in the room, they, they would hear the pastor going, well, and they were like, man, you better get in there. Pastor needs you. Well, you needed to hear what the pastor was saying before he got to that part. Because that was the close. But he wasn't passionate about the word. He was passionate about playing and, and earning that check. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Do you have passion for the things of God? And so this word took me, took me in a direction I didn't know was going, but I thank God that it did. Because I began to ask this question that says, can you have passion for what you do? When you are born to be Robin and not Batman. Can you have passion? Uh, uh, can, can you have the passion that you need, hallelujah, to be a successful witness when you're always setting up? When you're always giving the assist, but never getting the glory? Born to prepare the way, but not to lead or even walk in the way. Woo! I had to think about that because cause, cause, cause we're born to, to be Robin and not Batman. It takes a passion for God and compassion on his people to do to do this for Jesus, to have this kind of passion and compassion uh, 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 as a Christian. To remember it's not about you. It's about the Lord. The minute 
the minute we, 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 we give our lives to the Lord, the minute that we are born again, we're destined to always be second. It's not about me. It's not about how I feel. It's not even about what I want. It's what did God say? And so I'm, I'm, I was take, I'm taken to this character in, in the word of God because you know, I, I, knew, I knew so little about him. And yet he's talked about all the time. John the Baptist. John the Baptist was born, conceived to be Robin. Second to Jesus. But his passion allowed him to fulfill God's purpose for his life. Completely. And I don't know about you, but it doesn't matter if I'm robbing, if I fulfill the will of God for my life completely. There's a lot of people have a problem with that. I mean, and, and, and what I'm saying, and I'm saying it in terms of Robin and Batman, is because that's how that it's perceived in the world. You got two, super, two superstars on the team, they're like, okay, who's Batman, who's Robin? Because, you know, who's going to get all the glory and, and who's just going to be on the team that, that's going to help with the success, but people don't recognize. And there are a lot of people who, who they're, today, more and more, their egos will not allow them to be second because this world is always about, look at me. And I'm, I'm not going to have my Facebook page be about you. My Twitter, my Instagram, whatever. it's, it's going to be about me. I can't have you getting more likes than me. I'm going to have to take you off my page. The world has become so self-focused that even in the church, we're starting to forget that it's not about us. It's not about my glory. It's about his glory. And so, as we look at this, you know, the, the story of John the Baptist, and it's going to take me some time, because I... I said, Lord, whew, this, was, this was amazing. But we'll start out with some of the things that we know that we saw in Luke chapter 1, 13 to 15. It says, but the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayers. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He will be great in the eyes of the Lord. But no one talks about how great John the Baptist was. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. I don't know about you, but we don't often relate John the Baptist with being Holy Ghost filled. It was like, you know, crazy John the Baptist, you know, eating locusts and, and you know, wild honey in the, in the wilderness. Strange. But filled with the Holy Ghost. Before he was born, none of us could say we was filled with the Holy Ghost before we was born. Because we had to be born again, oh hallelujah, thank you Jesus, in order to be filled 
We was born in sin, shaped in iniquity, but he was born filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Bible says that he had a mission. And we go back to Luke, Luke chapter 1, verse 16, it says, here's his mission. And he will turn many Israelites to the, to their Lord, to the Lord their God. He will be a man uh, with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. I thought he was just supposed to cry out in the wilderness. But he wasn't, you know, it was, you know, it, it, that wasn't his job. Just go out there and scream, Jesus is coming. You get ready, Jesus is coming. No, he had a mission to accomplish. And when, and when they say prepare the way, there was a specific way that God wanted the way to be prepared. And he had to be Holy Ghost filled from, from day one. To accomplish what God wanted him to accomplish. That's why we have to be Holy Ghost filled from day one. People don't mind. You got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. But but here's the thing. It says you must be born again, right? Not of water, but of Spirit. And so if you're born again, it can only happen through the Spirit. It can only happen through the Spirit. Now, what, what level of anointing that you're living on? I mean, you know, if, you, if, if you're not filling yourself up with the things of God, then, then that's talking about how filled you are. But you can only be born again of the Spirit. And there's only one Spirit, and that's Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, praise the Lord anyhow. All the Gospels talked about John. John, John, in John, chapter 1, verse 6 to 9, the Word of God said, said this, God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He says, John, I don't care how good you get, you ain't it. But you still have to be passionate about what it is you need to do. See, that's that, you know, that's what we got to shake off. Stop looking at sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so and trying to, and trying to be like them. No, you be who you're supposed to be. So that you can accomplish what God has you here to accomplish. I don't care how well uh, 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 sister so-and-so or missionary so-and-so uh, 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 knows the word of God, they can't reach the people you can reach because they're not where you are. Amen. Brother so-and-so, elder so-and-so, deacon, pastor, bishop, I don't care how eloquent they are, they don't have your assignment. Born to be Robin. John the Baptist was the first worshiper, worshiper of God in the New Testament who had Holy Spirit, who had a Holy Spirit-powered assignment. 
He had an assignment that could not fail as long as he did what he was told to do. And you got you to think about something. All of us are Holy Ghost filled and Holy Ghost powered. And you have to understand, we, we, you can't fail if you're doing what the word is telling you what to do because you're powered by the, by the, the most powerful I'm not, not, person on this earth, Holy Ghost. I ain't going to call him a thing. We get, we, we get, get messed up talking about the Holy Ghost is a thing. You know, oh, no, no. most powerful person in this world, in this earth, Holy Ghost. And he's in you. And he's there so that you can accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. John the Baptist knew who he was. He knew what he had to do. And he knew what role he had to play. See, that's the thing. It's too many, but I, man, I don't want to be Robin. I don't want to be second fiddle. You know, there's people that want to bring people to Christ, and then they want to walk with them everywhere. Well, I brought them here. Those was my converts. They want to be responsible for everything that go on and get mad. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Do you understand the role that you have in the kingdom of God? Yeah. I mean, yeah, one, wa one plant, one water, but God brings the increase. Don't you feel sorry sometimes? It's like, you know, the guy, you know, the, the quarterback throws a pass. And, 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 and the guy runs 80 yards and gets tackled on the one yard line and then they send, send in Joe Blow and he go over and he get the, you know, he get the touchdown. It's like, what? You could at least gave it to me. I, I did all of them. I, I got us to the... And they don't record that as anything other than you caught the pass. But you don't get the glory. You don't get to dance. You don't get to throw the ball. You don't get to do. You don't get none of that. And that's what God requires of us. You take it as far as you can, but 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 you're never gonna get the touchdown. You're never gonna get the the winning shot because it belongs to God. God is, you know, God through his son Jesus Christ is always going to be responsible for the saved soul. You don't, you don't get any credit for the saved soul because you did nothing to save the soul. You told them about who can save their soul. And we got to understand, you know, we, and we got to recognize, look at all the souls I've saved. No, you haven't. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Do you understand the role that you have in God's kingdom? And so we talked about that, that, that you know, here, here's John, and he's, and, and, you know, and, 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 and he's conceived and filled with the Holy Ghost from birth, and, you know, I mean, so it's his not he, has, he experiences a life no other child has experienced. He has filled with the Holy Ghost from birth. Age one. I, what no terrible twos? <laughs> I, don't have no, I don't have nothing to back that up. But I'm just telling you, nobody else been filled since birth. So strange... That he ends up just in the wilderness. I mean, you know, this, you know, I mean, it's got to be strange to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost as a child. I mean, you, I mean, you just can't relate to other people, to other kids. You can imagine how he got strange, why he was so strange. He ends up in the wilderness. Waiting for his assignment to begin. He, he 
He's chosen to be, the word says, what he's going to be. He's filled, so he has, he has the, 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 the inner direction to know it ain't time. It ain't time. He filled. Power of the Holy Ghost with him. Direction is with him. Guidance is with him. God is with him in him. And so the word of God says, Luke, in Luke chapter 3, verse 2, Annas and, 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 and Caiaphas were high priests. At this time, a message from God came to John, son of Zacharias, Zechariah, who was living in the wilderness. He's a grown man now. On call, on hold until a message from God came to him. I never knew that. It's always been in the word of God. But he sat there waiting for the call to come. He got a message from God. I'm feeling pretty good about myself because everybody ain't getting a message from God. That's why the Bible says you, gotta, you can't think more higher of yourself than you are. Because he got a message from God to do what he was born to do. And the Bible says, then John, not until he got a message from God, did he begin his ministry. He didn't have ministry from day one. He wasn't preaching as a little kid and he wasn't preaching. He didn't start until he got a message from God. But he was already in the wilderness. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm passionate. I'm waiting. And then he got the word to go. Bible says, then John went from place to place on both sides of the Jordan River, preaching that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. strange thing to happen in those days because people had their rituals they had their, they, they had you know this festival and that festival and you come on this day and you come on that day and you kill the chicken and you give it to the priest and yeah I mean you know they, they had this is this is strange Ooh, thank you Jesus and so he started this baptism but, but understand, when he got the message from God, this is what God told him to do. This is what was in the message. Word of God says in, in verse 4, Isaiah had spoken of John when he said, he is a voice Shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. The valleys will be filled and the mountains and hills made level. The curves will be straightened and the rough places made smooth. And then all people will, will see the salvation sent from God. Made it sound like John was supposed to be a contractor. Working on the valleys and the hills and the curves and, and the... But, but he's not, they're not talking physically, they're talking spiritually within man. When he's talking about uh, um, uh, preaching to people to show that they, you know, to be baptized, to show that they have repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven, that, that, that's people get, getting their valleys filled and their mountains and, 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 and hills leveled. That's people getting their curves straightened. That's people getting their rough, rough, rough places made smooth. By acknowledging that they have repented and turned to God and, 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 and being baptized. Now understand, John is speaking out of, 
a, a Holy Ghost power to people that have none. He's asking them to, 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 you know, give it their best shot with what they have. He's preparing their minds. And he's preparing their thoughts. I mean, even if they say, I'm going to do it today, and, and they get baptized and they messed up, and they get up and dust themselves off because they don't have the power to do it. What he's asking them to do, they have no power to really do it, but he's, he's, he's getting them in the frame of mind. He's preparing the road for Jesus. In Luke 3, we go to verse 7, it says, John, John, when we talk about John's passion, he didn't play. He said, when the crowds came to John for baptism, understand, this is John. He's, he, he's bringing crowds. It's not just one or two people. It's a lot of people. And when the crowds come, He said, you, you brew the snakes? Who warns you to flee the coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Some of the same words we, we have to say today. Because people are like, well, I'm, I'm saved. I'm just as saved as you are. Prove. By the way you live, that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe. We can change that to 2021. Don't just say, say to each other, we're saved. You saved, I'm saved. Oh, cool, all right. Let's go to the club. We can watch each other back, because we both saved. No, that don't happen, that don't happen. Don't just say that we say to each other we're say, safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. 2021. Don't just say that you saved because you belong to the church of God in Christ. Don't just say that you safe because you Baptist. Well, you know, Baptist, we can smoke, drink. No. And that's a that's that's not true. All Baptists don't believe that. There's, there's a lot of Baptists that believe you've got to live right. Because they, 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 they read the same word that we read. And they understand it. So I got a lot of bro Baptist brothers and sisters that don't smoke, drink, and think it's right. But it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's some of the, look, it's some of the church of God in Christ. You know put dentine on their hands before they come in and chewing gum and all that because smoking everything on their breath and everything. Well, I digress. Oh, praise the Lord. But your words, what he's saying is your words don't mean that you're safe. What do he say? That means nothing. It meant nothing then. It means nothing now. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Just because you was born in, <laughs> don't mean you're the only one that can be. <laughs> I'm just reading the word. That's just the word. I'm just reading the word. Then he says, even now the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. This is, this is John. And yet, when I, when I think of that, I think about Jesus. What he's talking about? He was talking about the trees were the religious institutions of that day. The big trees. 
And they're getting ready to be chopped down. And he was talking about what Jesus was about to institute in the New Testament. But he was instructing them on, on how to have a passionate relationship with God. He's like, you guys got to get ready because if you think I'm rough, wait till Jesus comes. Because his job was to prepare the way. He said, get in the water or get burned in the fire. As simple as that. Get in the water or get burned in the fire. Now, here's something that was surprisingly to me. It was surprising, it was surprising that I saw this in the word that came from John. Because John, I thought John was just hard. But John taught the people how to be compassionate with one another. Look at verse, chapter 3, verse 10. The crowds asked, what should we do? John replied, well, look, if, if you have two shirts, give one to the poor. If you have some food, share it with those who are hungry. Now, I don't, think about, I don't think about anything like this until the Sermon on the Mount, right? Here's John. Even corrupt tax collectors came to be baptized and asked, Teacher, what should we do? He replied, Collect no more taxes than the government requires. What should we do? Asked some soldiers. John replied, don't extort money or make false accusations and be content with your pay. He was led by the Spirit to respond in a manner that was like Jesus, whose ministry was still quiet. At this time, Jesus wasn't, people, he wasn't doing, you know, making no big statements. He wasn't out yet. He hadn't arrived yet. And so, John's ministry was like Jesus' ministry, you know, like, you know, like, like Peter and Paul, you know, but they were repeating, but Paul had to be inspired. This is all Holy Ghost. This is not emulation. But it's all lining up with Jesus because he was born to be robbing. The Bible says, you know, his assignments were to cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. I mean, look at who's coming to him. Soldiers. Tax collectors. Those are rebellious people. And, not, and, 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 and he's not saying, hey, you tax collector, Tax collectors are coming to him and saying, what should I do? How I get myself together? Soldiers are saying, that's how powerful he is. Rebellious people are coming to him. And, 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 and then it said that he was going to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And I was like, I don't remember John turning the hearts of the fathers to their children. But when you, when, you, when you look at what he's telling them to do, when a father decides to live right in front of his children, by, by example, his heart is turned to them because they now receive a moral standard to live by. When a father lives right, when a father decides to wake up and come to church, his hearts are turned to his children because if he going, everybody going. A father can change the tide. See, when mama go, daddy's still staying in the bed. You got people, five kids talking about, why? Well, well, daddy ain't going, I don't want to go. I lived it. 
when the father gets up and gets dressed, it ain't no, it ain't no doubt. Everybody going. I'm locking the door. One time I, we came to church and I trust one of my kids. I said, no, nah, okay, Peter. I got home. He was still in the bed. I said, don't you ever. Went upstairs. He was still asleep. Don't you ever not be at church. I serious. Next time you do that, you find yourself another place to live. I fell back to sleep. I don't really care. If I can't trust you to go on your own, you're going to leave out when I leave out. Woo! Where am I? <laughs> look at this one. Look at this one. People try to take his mission away from him. Because, you know, people try to blow your head up. They try to blow your head up, you know. They, you know, I know a lot of people that, you know, you know, became pastors. And a lot of times when you talk to them, it's like, man, I didn't want, to, I didn't want this. I, didn't, I really didn't want this. And then, and then you have some that, that do it and then they don't last because it, it doesn't work out the way they want it to work out, you know. I didn't get the packed church. I didn't get the packed you know, the people didn't come, the money didn't come. I ain't doing this too much time. But, but the people that, it, that God put it on their hearts to do, it really doesn't matter. Because it's all about the mission. And he said, everyone in verse 15, chapter, Luke chapter 3, verse 15, everyone was expecting the Messiah to come soon. And they were eager to know whether John might be the Messiah. But John answered their question by saying, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I am. There's nobody, there's, there's nobody that I know in this world is like, Woo, I know I'm scoring, scoring all the points on the team today, Brother Hill, but, but you know, in the next draft, there's going to be somebody that come that's going to be better than me. No, they walk around thinking, I'm the best there is. Nobody is calling, look, there's somebody that's coming that's going to be better than me. Nope. They saying, there can't nobody you bring going to be better than me. But John the Baptist, he understands, he said, there's someone coming who will be greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. That's some passion and dedication about who you are and what you were called to do. And who's coming next. I'm called to prepare the way. If I'm preparing the way, there's somebody coming. Woo! He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He acknowledges that, that, that the Messiah is the main attraction. And I ain't the star. Man. I built this. They're here to see me. I got to turn them to Jesus. It blows your mind, but it, under, it, it makes you understand why he had to be filled with the Holy Spirit from birth to do this job because they couldn't find anybody that would have been willing to do this job. You got priests who are jealous of him. You got people who are jealous of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is saying, yeah, but I'm not even the star. And so we, we must develop a witness that is so strong for Jesus that we draw them and allow people to, to, to have their own relationship with the Lord. We are all the Robins. Second fiddle to Jesus. And he's the star. We will never get, 
we will never get the credit that we that others might think we deserve and that's because it's not our plan it's not our playbook we're just following the directions that will lead us to the success that's needed for God we only assist and that's where I'm gonna stop we only assist but you've got to learn to, 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 to play your role you've got to learn to be the best if, if your job is just to assist, you got to be the best assister there. I, there's, I, look, look, if you got to throw the pass, throw the pass, uh, throw a no-look pass. Throw it through your legs. Look good doing it, but, but, but make sure that, 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 that Jesus scores. Make sure that the soul is saved. It makes no sense if, if, if you want all the glory on you, but everybody else is going to hell. It makes no sense if... There's a story of... of, 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 of a, well, y'all know. The church is taking offerings, and they come out and stop the service. To raise more offer. Look, we, we didn't reach where we going. Y'all, y'all gonna have to pay. Stop the service. We didn't get what we were supposed to get, and y'all we gonna we gonna stop and collect money, right? Now. Focus is on them and not on God. As this world gets worse and worse, as this world gets more and more corrupt. Jesus knows that he can count. He needs to know he can count on you. Can he count on you? Can he, can he count on you, hallelujah, to bring? To bring the people in, to make the assist. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Can he count on you? He's like, look, I don't need you to save him. Just tell him about me. I don't, I don't need, look, if they don't want to accept, just tell them how good he's been to you. Just plant the seed. Don't be quiet. Make the assist. Pass the ball. Throw the ball. Just, just, just know that if you do it, Jesus is going he, he to take it. You don't have to wonder about how it's going to happen and when it's going to happen. And they, they, they've been like this and so long that they're never going to change. That's not your business. Your business is to carry out your assignment. Your business is to, is, 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 is to be passionate about who, you, who God is in your life and be compassionate about his people. Hallelujah. To tell them, to witness, to, to, to be who you say you are. I'm changing Pastor Brown. I'm, I'm, I'm adding to my repertoire. You know, I, I, I tell people all the time, you know, you know, they say, you know, is there anything else I can help you? And it says, you know, and it says, I say yes. And what is it? Have a blessed day and remember Jesus loves you. Right? I'm adding to that. I say, I, I, have a blessed day. Remember Jesus loves you. And, and, and do you want him to change your life? like I got comfortable with the rest I'll need to ask some more get comfortable now I'm trying to throw the, I'm trying to do a pass through my legs now <laughs> I got good at, at, at the one kind of assist now I'm trying to do it another way and that's what God says look just throw just, just throw me the ball just tell them about me just introduce me to them And I'll do the rest. That's my focus. Hallelujah. That's my focus. Will I, will I, will I fall sometimes? I hope not, but if I do, I'm getting back up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm falling, I'm, I'm following the, the words of Mother Smart. El Hicks, Saints don't. They don't practice sin. They don't purpose to sin. That's what she said. 
Hallelujah. I finally got it, Mother Smart. I ain't purposing to do it. But if it happens, I know where my help comes from. Come on, we're standing. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your spirit is in this place. It was already here. Hallelujah. And I just thank you for these people who are here right now. I thank you for these people who have heard this word, Lord. I pray that the sincerity of this word, hallelujah, and, and, and the example of John the Baptist as we continue to, to open it and, and show his passion and compassion, hallelujah, even knowing, even knowing that he was born to be second that he was born to give up everything that he was going to have to create for you for you thank you Jesus that we can live each day saying for God I live and for God I'll die that I want to live this life representing you I want to live each day representing you hallelujah Hallelujah. I may look strange. I may look as strange as John the Baptist did to the rest of the world, but as no matter how strange he looked, the message, the power of the Holy Spirit drew people to him. Crazy John. How they depict him on TV. Crazy John. But his word, his message was the draw. Don't worry about what people say about you. Hallelujah. Let your mouth be filled with the word of God. And if your mouth is filled with the word of God, it will draw. It will draw people for Jesus not for you he said if I be lifted up I will draw you have here. been listening to words to grow right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks jr we pray that this word takes root in your life